Hey folks, in this video I'll be shooting with the Z9, the FTC adapters and a range of different F-mount lenses adapted to the Z9. And spoiler alert, this is going to seriously change the playing field for any Nikon shooters who are considering stepping up to the Z9. Hey folks, just jumping in here. I've just finished up a day of testing. I feel like this video needs a disclaimer. No, I'm not sponsored by Nikon. No, I'm not paid to say this. No, I'm not an ambassador. But yes, I do have the Z9 for a week long loan at the moment, which is very lucky of me. Thank you to Nikon Hong Kong for that. But all the thoughts in this video are my own and honest opinions. They have no input into what I say, do or test in these videos. But a lot of people are gonna be happy with this one. Now through this video folks, I'm gonna be sharing you a bunch of different images taken with the Z9. We've just gotten access to the raw file, so I'll have a link to the software you can download to view them there, and a link to some sample files from today's shoot that you can download over at my website. Greetings folks, back in Chrome Studios. If you saw my first hands-on with the Z9, we film most of that here. Today I want to look at adapting lenses. Now there are a lot of people I know who have been holding off from going mirrorless because it didn't offer what they needed and those people probably still have a whole bunch of F-mount glass. So I know you're going to be interested to know whether native Nikon F-mount lenses or third-party brands like Tamron and Sigma are working well on there. I have really high hopes for this test. When I tested my 200mm F2 on the Z9 via the FTC Mark II, I found it actually performed better on the mirrorless camera than it had on any camera in the past, side by side with the Nikon D6 even. So in this video, I'll quickly show you the difference between the FTC one and two adapters. And then I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different shoots comparing the native lens to the adapted lens and just overall show you how the adapted lenses are doing, including recording straight through the viewfinder so you can see how they are. Now. To start off, I have the Z50mm and I have the F50mm, I'll do that via adapter. Then I have all three of the 24-70s, Tamron, Nikon F and Nikon Z, same with the 70-200s, and I actually have a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's first off take a look at the adapters. So first let's throw the FTC Mark I on here. You can see it does fit but you really don't have a lot of room there. If you were trying to go to a portrait orientation, you're gonna to struggle to fit a finger in there. Then throwing the 50 mil F-mount lens on, actually comes out to be about the same size as the Z51.8. And you can see it's fine, but if we spin it around to go into portrait mode, if I were doing a normal shoot here, I really can't get my fingers into that spot to keep shooting. So that's not really going to work for us. That's pretty much why they came out with the FTZ Mark II. You can see much more space around there. Now throwing a lens on, love that my sensor is still covered. And now, I have normal access in there like I would with any lens to be able to shoot comfortably. So that's essentially the only difference. Nikon says that the performance is no different. I will still give it a little bit of a try side by side. So shooting with the 50mm f1.4 G side by side with the 1.8 native Z lens, I have to say they were both performing really well. It was clear that the adapted lens was slightly slower, but it was absolutely usable. It kept up with her. We did a bunch of different tests with it. And what can I say? It just works fine. The main takeaway for me though was how much better the Z lens is optically. Here's some samples. And here's some samples with the G lens, mostly showing you that the camera was able to keep up, even with really fast moving subjects. Not bad. Next up, we switch to the 24 to 70s. This is the latest F-mount VR lens adapted. 
And honestly, other than it being so big and heavy, it was performing great. It was keeping up with her. As you can see through this whole series, it's just staying with her. The eye is in focus in all, pretty much all of the shots. I'm gonna make a selection of the files available for you to download over at learn.artnudeportraiture.com and whilst you're there, you can check out my complete start to finish photo shoot with Dancer Mel. Now, please note this photo shoot is intended for a mature audience. It's at my Art Nude Portraiture website for a reason. Mel's a professional dancer and model we shot in a designer hotel room and then a series of dance shoots in the same studio. Next up, we switch to the Tamron 24-70 lens. This is a lens that I have shot with quite a bit previously in the past. And again, it's doing pretty well. Um, I have to say it was, of all the lenses I tested today, noticeably the slowest of them, but still absolutely usable. It, the, all of the focus modes were working fine. It was finding the eye even in tricky situations, just the time it took to pull focus was a little bit longer than on the F mount version of the Nikon or the 70 to 200s that we're going to test next. But the accuracy is still quite good. Switching to the native 24 to 70, as you would expect, this was doing flawlessly, whereas the others maybe were nine out of 10 or something like that in perfect focus. This was just nailing every shot. Here's some slow-mo video actually taken with the Z9. I have to say I'm really excited what this means for Nikon users to potentially be able to use their existing lenses. So far, every lens has been usable, adapted. Next, let's try the 70 to 200s. Again, I'll be using the F mount version of the Nikkor first. and then switching out to the Tamron version. And this one, unlike the 24 to 70, really seemed to keep up just as well as the Nikon. It was staying with her great, and the images that we're getting offered are completely satisfactory. Okay, so, so far, so good. I'm really happy what this is going to mean for Nikon shooters to be able to make use of their existing F-mount lenses with this camera. Now, the next test I'm gonna do, I'll tell you <laughs> honestly, selfishly, I kinda hope it doesn't perform that great because I'm gonna test two lenses that I loved for F-mount, but I sold them off thinking that they would never work as good via an adapter as they did on the F-mount bodies. And that is the 105 F1.4 and also the Tamron 35 to 150 F4, or 28 to F4. I, no, I take it back. I really hope that they do because there isn't those focal lengths in the current range. So it might just mean that I end up buying them back if it turns out that they do perform well. So for this one, Mel and I are gonna head out and find some back alleys in this area, test this in some lower light and then make use of that zoom range on the Tamron. So the Tamron 35 to 150, again, I noticed it was a little bit slower for focus acquisition, but really accurate here, grabbing the guy down the alleyway and then it just came back to her so quickly. It's a little bit slower than some of the faster lenses to pull focus, but to be honest, right around where I expected it to be, given how it performs on a DSLR anyway. And when it did lock focus, the images are crisp and sharp and exactly how you want them to be. Now, here's a little bit of video taken with the Z9 and the 105.14. This was my second favorite F-mount lens, and I can tell you now, having shot with it on the Z body, I regret having sold it because it just performs so well. We did some simple portraits here. Then I had Mel actually walk towards camera at f1.4 in a kind of dark alleyway to see how it would keep up with her. 
and amazingly it just it's doing great it's with her throughout let's pause and zoom in on one as the guy in the background stops to check her out and you can see it's just perfectly in focus and even as she gets closer to the camera no problems perfectly in focus last couple of shots here shooting along some wastewater drains just trying to get some different options for you guys I'm really impressed with how this is doing Okay, so jokes aside folks, yes, I was a little disappointed personally that the 105 performed so well. When I sold off my DSLR gear, I'll put a card above, I just, having tested a lot of adapters in the market, they never work near native performance. And given some of my favorite lenses were already not super fast to focus on DSLR, I thought there's no chance they're really gonna be usable on mirrorless. So get rid of them whilst the market is still strong. But I think this, like the 200 F2, is as good, maybe better, maybe just behind, as using it on the top DSLRs. So I've actually already ordered a new 105 for myself. For you guys, though, I think it's really an exciting thing because if you were, you know, a D850 user, I've heard this from a lot of you who've been waiting because mirrorless wasn't meeting your needs. The prospect of selling all your lenses and buying a whole new system is really daunting, but if the what I'm finding in my testing holds up and more lenses are like this, you could potentially just switch bodies, get the adapter, use what you have, and then when the time comes that you, you want to replace or upgrade your lens, then you can go for the Z version, but in the meantime, keep using your F1s. Optically, the Z lenses are still overall better than the F mount ones and still focusing that bit faster. But all that I've tested so far have been absolutely usable. Now, a couple of quick things to note. I'm doing these tests on the camera version, running firmware version 1.0, which is actually pre-production, so that may change. And then the you know manufacturers like Tamron and Sigma will, I'm sure, do updates for their lenses to increase compatibility. So you might find that down the track, the performance is actually going to improve. Now, I had already planned to go do some birding and long lens stuff to test out the Z9. So I'm going to do more adapted, and I've gotten in the Tamron 150 to 600, the Nikon 200 to 500. Both of those I added to my test based on the feedback you guys gave of lenses you'd like to see tested, as well as the 400 to 8. And I've got the 1.4 and 2 times teleconverters, both F and Z mounts. So I'm gonna do a bunch of long lens testing, but I have the camera for about another week. I have other lenses coming, including more from Tamron and Sigma. So if there's other things that you would like to see me test, I have wakeboarding and surfing and portrait sessions and aquariums and stuff that I'm planning to shoot over the next week. So I can definitely add in more adapted lens tests for you. Do check out the sample files. I'll have a link to those below, completely free. And now that the NX software has been updated, I'll include the RAWs so you can check those out as well. And do check out the shoot that I have with Mel over at artnudeportraiture.com. But do note, it is intended for a mature audience and includes full nudity. The hotel segment is actually more of an erotic shoot. Let me know any questions you have and I will see you really soon. Cheers.